All right, everybody, here it is, the unboxing of Brody's Ghost, book five. Been waiting a while for this. The second to last book in the series. Oh my goodness. There it is. <laughs> All right, Brody's Ghost, book five. Let me get this box out of the way here. I gotta do my traditional thing here. Book one, book two, book three, Book four, and now, book five in Brody's Ghost. Thanks so much for, for sharing this moment with me, friends. Uh, I really appreciate it. Enough of this, let's get on with the video. Hey there, everybody. It's Mark Crilly. I'm back with another How to Draw video. Today, we're going to be learning how to draw the same character from three different points of view. So, let's uh, begin with these guidelines here. Um, these are about two and a half inches apart, or a little over six uh, centimeters, uh, if you want to get those lines in place. And right now, I'm going to add just a couple of more lines. Okay, so this line right here is right between the two. Uh, the top line being going to be the top uh, of the head, and uh, the bottom line is going to be the chin. Uh, and these two lines are going to show us where to put the eyes. So anyway, this first line here is um, exactly between the two. And then this one is about a third of that distance um, between these two. So let's go ahead and I'm going to move, uh, you know, refocus the camera so that we can begin drawing the face of this figure um, uh, looking straight toward us. Okay, so here you see the shape of the head, and you'll notice that I didn't make the top of the head actually touch that top line. This top line is really going to be for the hair, which comes a little bit above um, the actual uh, top of the head. In fact, you're not even going to see this line uh, here uh, at the end of the drawing. Anyway, um, as you can see, the, the chin comes to a bit of a point. Uh, do your best to sort of replicate this shape. And what I'm going to do right now is go ahead and uh, get the uh, basic guidelines in for the eyes. Okay, so I'm going to stop with all the time lapse and uh, start doing some real time drawing here. Uh, and as I do, maybe explain a little bit about um, my concept with this video. First of all, I want to make it clear that I do not mean to say that this is the way to draw a manga face. There is no the way. There's uh, so hundreds, thousands of different ways. And um, uh, really my purpose with this video is to show how to draw a character of some kind consistently um, and have it look like the same character time after time. Uh, because a lot of people have, um, you know, requested a video that shows, you know, Mark, how, how can I draw my character again and again and have it always look like the same character no matter what point of view, you know, what angle I'm looking at the character from, uh, or if they change their facial expression. Uh, what is the secret to consistency in character drawing? And that's really what this video is about. So, um, some of you may want to follow along with this in a line-by-line -line way, uh, especially if you like this particular manga face that I'm uh, drawing. You know, go go right ahead. I'd be delighted if you do that. But um, a second and possibly more important way of using this video is just to, in a general way to understand the principle of getting uh, the facial features of your character uh, consistent over time. And um, they're not going to look like this character, right? You're going to invent your own character. But one thing that I think holds true is that you need to get the facial features in the same location every time you draw the face. So you can see here that I had these lines for the top of the eye and the bottom of the eye, and that's um, helping me get that uh, those eyes uh, in the exact same place, especially as we move from this drawing to the, the other two and we uh, start looking at the character from a different point of view. But, you know, if you want to draw these partic particular eyes, you can see how I did it. There's a highlight uh, on uh, each eye, uh, in my case on the left, and then I sort of leave a white space down here, sort of crescent-shaped white space. One other thing that I often see... Uh, manga artists do is to add a uh, line uh, or two here for the uh, fold of the upper eyelid. And this particular style of drawing eyes, we don't really um, delineate, uh, we don't draw a lower eyelash line, we just sort of flatten out the bottom of the iris here. And that uh, suggests the uh, existence of a, a lower eyelash without actually drawing it there. Well, I'm going to put in a couple of more uh, lines, horizontal lines, to show where the nose and the mouth are going to be drawn. 
Okay, so I've added these two more horizontal lines. I guess what you could do really is um, get this line in first, a little more than halfway between these two, and then uh, get uh, the extra line pretty much exactly between um, these two lines. So uh, anyway, I'm going to go ahead and draw just a, a bit of a dot here for the nose. This, uh, this style of drawing a manga face um, sort of minimizes the uh, nose and uh, the mouth as well. Uh, you're not... Um, not making a big smiley face. Um, really the emphasis is on the eyes and so you keep the nose and the mouth a little bit de-emphasized. Um, oh, and I also wanted to point out the uh, space between the eyes. Very important uh, if you're going to try to replicate this. And indeed, it's really the relationship between all of these things, the mouth, the nose, the eyes, uh, and the shape of the head and so forth. This is what's going to allow you to uh, have your uh, character look consistently the same over time. Now, I'm going to go ahead and add a couple of um, eyebrows here. A couple. <laughs> <laughs> Better to draw two than just one. I'm going to add just one eyebrow. Why not? Anyway, so um, I'm giving her a fairly neutral, um, you know, slightly happy, but not exaggeratedly so, expression. And on the other two um, versions of this same character, we're going to be uh, drawing different facial expressions so that you'll get, um, yeah, the, the uh, tips on drawing not only different angles, but also different facial expressions. Now I'm going to quickly add the neck and shoulders uh, in time lapse. All right, so this is really not going to be so much about the neck and shoulders. I kind of have to pick and choose with this video what I'm going to focus on, and uh, but you can pay attention to the width uh, of the neck and the uh, you know breadth, broad broadliness of the shoulders, if you want to. The slope of the shoulders is very important. Um, but one thing I noticed that I forgot to put in here, it's not going to be so visible visible in the final drawing, but it is the uh, ears the location of the ears. And I'm going to have them start at the top of that eye line and then um, come a little bit past the bottom of the eye line. And just, her hairstyle is going to obscure these ears a little bit, but uh, it is important in terms of drawing your character consistently to get all of these different uh, facial features, including the ears. Are ears facial features? <laughs> side of the head features? Head side features! I'm not really sure. Weigh in in the comment section. Let me know. Are ears facial features? I ask only the most burning questions here uh, on YouTube. Oh, I'm going to very quickly uh, add the hairstyle. Again, not the focus of this video, but we'll get it in place. Okay, so, um, yeah, like I said, I, I'm not going to make this... Um, so much about drawing this particular hairstyle. It really is meant to be a video about uh, the facial features. Um, but uh, that being said, uh, consistency in drawing a character of your own creation does mean consistency in that hairstyle. So um, let's say I decide to give her these sort of side bangs or whatever they're called, the hair uh, strands of hair that come down in front of the ears. Um, if I decide that they stop at this line where the mouth is, conveniently. <laughs> That's where they're going to have to stop in every drawing that I do, right? And uh, if her bangs uh, come lower down on the face than her eyebrows, then again, I need to be uh, consistent uh, from one uh, drawing of her to the next. And um, that's maybe about, about all I'm going to say about the hairstyle. I, I don't want this to be a 30 minute long video, uh, which it could easily be if I start uh, talking about each and every aspect uh, of all three drawings. So let's go ahead now and move on to getting down to some of the basic guidelines uh, for the head that's going to be in a three quarter point of view. All right, so I decided to go ahead and get the basic guidelines of the eyes in place. And this head, uh, in a three-quarter point of view, is also going to be just at a little bit of a tilt. Uh, and so that means that this eye here is not going to be reaching that um, uh, guideline up there. But this first eye we're going to keep pretty consistent uh, with, uh, you know, the guidelines uh, for the eyes over there. Um, I'll go ahead and um, add these um, interior eye uh, features while I... Uh, talk a little more about this idea of consistency in terms of drawing a character. Now you may be wondering, Mark, do you sit here and draw guidelines like this every time you draw your character, like in Brody's Ghost or whatever? Well, no, that is not um, what I'm doing, but this is something I might be doing in the early stages of designing my character, when I'm practicing, when I'm preparing uh, for doing this story. i got to figure out 
the sort of geography of the face, the architecture of this face, and where are the eyes? Uh, um, how large are they in relation to the rest of the face? How am I going to draw the nose? All this stuff. You're, this is stuff for the preparatory stages. And, um, you know, you, you may, in a sort of a thumbnail way, be reminding yourself, oh, well, the eyes should, the top of the eye should never be higher than halfway between the, you know, the hair and the chin. You might have sort of rules of thumb that you are uh, consulting every once in a while, double checking to make sure that you're doing it right. But I, anyway, the basic message really is, um, you don't just sort of wing it and hope that your character looks the same way every time you draw it. Uh, artists who have consistency in the way they draw their characters uh, have that consistency because they have, you know, done the extra work of of planning it out and, and making sure that they uh, look the same, uh, you know, from one to the next by having a sort of a structure like this in place. Now I've put the the dot of the nose just a little below the line where I had it here again because the nose, the face is at a tilt. And uh, I did talk about how I wanted to give facial expressions, so I thought this time it might be kind of fun to give this girl a uh, slightly embarrassed look on her face, and that means um, curving up eye uh, brows, curving up yellow. <laughs> We want them to be very curving up, you learn. And then um, that is combined with a, uh, a smile of some kind, and that makes her look a little bit shy and embarrassed. And, uh, oh my gosh, I'm uh, sorry. I didn't mean for you to see the Valentine card I was making for you. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> everyone in this is like, Mark, please don't ever do that voice again. Never again. Um... And, uh, yeah, interestingly, the, this mouth is sort of ending up at around the same uh, line the upper lip is, anyway. I often am struggling with getting these, you know, relationships um, uh, right between the nose, the mouth, the chin. You know, it's something I struggle with. So if you struggle with it, then you have my sympathy, because I'm struggling with it myself. Now, um, let's go ahead and drop in the hair, the neck, and the shoulders uh, in time-lapse, and then uh, maybe we'll be ready to move on to that uh, face in profile. All right, well, before I move actually on to that uh, next one, I think I will say just a little word about drawing the uh, lines of the ears. It's kind of funny because um, uh, manga artists uh, very often have a way of drawing ears that are not super accurate to real human anatomy, and they'll have uh, this line here connect uh, to uh, these lines and create a sort of looping around... Um, you know, type of uh, uh, line combination that if you look at photographs of the human ear, it is not really reflecting reality. But hey, you know, that's not what manga illustration uh, is all about. You're um, really um, stylizing things and uh, giving it your own flair, basically. So um, I think that basically is enough for this one. You can see how it does uh, hopefully look like the same character, even though uh, we have tilted the head uh, to a different uh, angle. Let's go ahead now and uh, shift the camera so that we can draw the face in profile. All right, so I got the basic guidelines of the eye in place. Now, of course, in profile, the eye looks quite different, um, uh, but also, in this case, it looks extra different because I'm going to give her a look of surprise. Um, and so maybe I can go ahead and put the uh, eyebrows in here, raised eyebrows, of course, the internationally recognized <laughs> symbol of surprise, shock, dismay. Um, and uh, now it's time to do one of the toughest parts of a um, uh, drawing in profile. Um, and, you know, it helps uh, if you can follow along and get this basic uh, shape in place. But you need to um, get the between the tip of the nose, which again is uh, on this, the same line that we established to begin with, uh, between the tip of the nose and going down to the chin, um, you're going to have to get a very subtle line in place that is uh, delineating the uh, the lips. Now, uh, I say very subtle because um, manga artists do not make this line in a super pronounced way. It's a very uh, gradually uh, flowing type of a line. Um, and, and it's almost as if you've made one single line that sort of wobbles back and forth a little before it gets down towards the uh, area of the chin. 
uh, hopefully this is showing up, but uh, I would say the, the longest sort of flat area of this line is indeed down near the chin, and the sort of wobbly area of the lips is happening right there. And I'm just going to put in a um, simple, almost V shape here for uh, her open mouth, just a little bit, a little bit off to some, one side. I'm not going to have that line connect to the contour uh, of her lips. And um, yeah, that's um, you know pretty tricky. Even getting this basic shape of the head in profile to begin with is pretty tricky. But hopefully these horizontal lines uh, can help you you know get that uh, in the right place. So let's go ahead now and uh, quickly add uh, the um, basic hair and neck and shoulders guidelines. All right, well, we've got the basic guidelines in place, uh, and really that is the, the heart and soul of this video, is the placement of lines. This is not going to be about the final line work or about the shading. Um, you know, if you want to see a video uh, about that, go ahead and... Uh, request it in the comment section. Although, you know, I've done <laughs> 300 videos or more now, and some of them, uh, at least, are devoted uh, to shading uh, and the final polish and so forth. So, you know, I don't know if I'm going to do this particular video a second time uh, simply to show the final process in real time or whatever. But um, uh, let's see if I can give any final pointers here. You know, of course, as I said, the, 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 the line of the top of the scalp basically is is going to vanish in all of these videos, going to make that go away. And then also this uh, was a guideline for getting the shape of the head right, but it's not really necessary once you've got that in place. So um, maybe that gives you all you need to know um, about uh, drawing a character from different points of view with different facial expressions and having it look uh, consistently uh, to be the same character. Let me go ahead and refocus the camera so that we can see everything. And then I'm going to pull out my trusty black Prismacolor, ta -da! and do my old school technique of uh, final line work with the black Prismacolor and shading with the Dixon Ticonderoga. All right, well, there's my video on how to draw the same character from three different points of view. But of course, this video is not finished until I add the blushies. This time I get to add the blushies on three different characters in one video. Not different characters, same characters. But that still may be some kind of a record, I think, in Mark Curley video history. Oh, hang on, I gotta get the books. Can't end this video without thanking anyone who supported me by getting any of my books. Brody's Ghost, book five, it's finally out. Uh, Mickey Falls, as well as Mastering Manga 1 and Mastering Manga 2, really do greatly appreciate the support of those who help me out by getting those books. But let's go ahead and pick up this pencil so that I can lay it down. <laughs> and thank you one more time for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. And I'll be back with another one real soon.